Hello everyone and welcome to my Bachelor Nation 24 channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Joan Vasos set up golden baccalaureate men with her eliminated friends. Joan Vasos has already taken action and set up the golden baccalaureate men with Jerry Turner's rejects. Viewers have long been saying that many of them would make a good match. Now, she is further proving that theory. So, how many connections has she made so far? Keep reading for more details. Joan Vasos set up Golden Bachelorette men with Jerry's exes. Since the first season of The Golden Bachelorette began, viewers could see some of the men with other ladies, particularly those from Jerry Turner's Golden Bachelor season, as some mirrored one another. Fans immediately started matchmaking night one in the mansion. They knew not every man would be right for Joan Vasos, but there were a plethora of women that had experience with the show. Here are some suggestions. Pascal and April, Mark and Susan, Sandra and Jack, Jack and Susan, April and Paxel, Nancy and Jordan, Bob and Theresa, Ellen and Greg, Edith and Christopher, Leslie and Jordan, if he's not the F1. Just think they make a beautiful couple. Keith and Edith. So, couplings had been made, but it was up to Joan to work her magic and connect her friends with some suitors. First, though, she had to eliminate many of them to allow them to find love elsewhere. Joan started out with 24 men who became very close friends and is down to three, Fag Gansard, Chalk Chapel, and Pascal Abbey. That means that there are 21 eligible bachelors and the ladies of Jerry Turner's season perfect for a mixer. However, according to Life and Style, Joan Vasos has already started the matchmaking process. She has technically set up two couples but shared the fate of how that is going. Joan then went on to add she had one that's about to work, about to happen. Unfortunately, Joan remained tight-lipped as to who these couples were. Hopefully, she will spill the tea during the Men Tell All special or at the finale. More to come right now. There are 21 eligible men, but there could soon be 23. Joan Vasos just had her hometown dates and has three men remaining. She eliminated Jordan Heller after the hometowns as she did not think he gave enough. However, Joan still does not seem completely ready to be in a relationship after losing her husband in 2021. The final three and Joan will jet off to an exotic island on the Wednesday, October 30th episode of The Golden Baccalaureate. That will determine who she chooses to give the final rose to. When Joan Vasos walked onto the Golden Baccalaureate set, fans expected a woman looking for her own second chance at love. But as the weeks passed, a different picture started to emerge. Yes, Joan was there for romance, but not only her own. While viewers at home rooted for her connections with Charles and Guy, Joan was stirring up a whole other kind of matchmaker magic. Unbeknownst to many, Joan was already envisioning her eliminated suitors with other women, finding herself excited by the thought of pairing them with a select roster of her closest friends who, like her, were ready to start a new chapter. And, true to her vibrant and enterprising spirit, Joan went all in. A new plan for heartbreak. After each weekly rose ceremony, Joan would sigh and watch as another hopeful bachelor exited. As the limo pulled away, a spark of inspiration struck her. Why let them fade away, single and disappointed, when she had just the right friend in mind for each of them? Instead of a goodbye, Joan's thoughts turned to potential connections and the next chance to bring a spark back to these men's eyes. She jotted down notes in her journal after every episode. Carl, witty, loves cooking, reminds me of Jess from our cooking class, or Pascal. Needs someone who loves adventure, Julie? A plan began to form. The setup zone. One evening, Joan brought up her idea with the producers over dinner in the sprawling mansion dining room. The air filled with the scent of rose petals and lavender. The golden bachelorette vibe Joan found both amusing and inspiring. Why don't we set these guys up with some real contenders? Joan asked, flashing her signature smile. The producers raised their eyebrows. Half confused, half intrigued. She explained, Once I know they aren't my match, 
it doesn't mean they don't have a match. Anna got just the ladies in mind. The producers couldn't help but lean in. Joan's idea had potential. Not only did it keep the men engaged, but it also offered another twist for the audience, who, no doubt, would love to see second-chance connections unfolding in real time. The team quickly devised a plan to bring in Joan's close friends who had been waiting on standby, and each elimination would now become a potential meet-cute. Joan's friends arrive. On a crisp Friday evening, Joan's squad made their grand entrance. Each woman had a distinct style and energy, from Jenny, a feisty dance instructor, with a flair for the dramatic, to Carla, a retired marine biologist with a laugh that could light up a room. Joan greeted her friends with hugs and laughter, and the energy shifted immediately. Soon, Joan had a sparkling smile on her face, watching the men catch glimpses of the newcomers. I know these guys, she assured her friends as she introduced them. They got good hearts, they're looking for something real, and I think a couple of you are just the right fit. Joan was delighted to play matchmaker, feeling a thrill watching sparks fly as her friends and former suitors exchanged stories and laughter. The energy felt different, more authentic, less pressured by the spectacle of the show. Carl and Jenny, a connection over cooking. The first pairing Joan attempted was Carl and Jenny. Carl had been a hopeful suitor for Joan, drawn to her confidence and warmth, but she'd realized early on that their chemistry was more friendly than romantic. But when she saw him meet Jenny, Joan could practically feel the sparks. They bonded over their shared love of cooking, a rare coincidence that Joan had cleverly anticipated. By the time dessert was served, the two were trading recipes and planning a post-show date at a famous farm-to-table restaurant. Joan watched with pride as they exchanged numbers, a sense of accomplishment washing over her. Pascal and Carla. Adventure awaits. Joan's next setup involved Pascal, a rugged adventurer who found himself unexpectedly single after his elimination. She introduced him to Carla, whose love for the outdoors had taken her all over the world. Joan had a hunch they'd hit it off, and within minutes of meeting, Pascal and Carla were deep in conversation, sharing tales of travel and expeditions that left them both with stars in their eyes. They even planned to go kayaking together, an adventure that had Joan beaming with pride. The producers began catching onto Joan's matchmaking prowess, even giving her a special segment called Joan's Golden Second Chances, where she dish out her hopes for each new pairing. It became an instant fan favorite, as viewers tuned in not only for Joan's own love story, but also for the ones she created along the way. The audience rooted for her friends as much as they rooted for her, captivated by the extended family Joan had made of her suitors. A twist in Joan's journey. Ironically, while Joan was creating matches left and right, her own romantic journey took a surprising turn. Guy, one of her top choices, started to pull back, and she found herself questioning whether he was the one for her after all. In a moment of candor, Joan admitted to the camera that she was losing faith in her own connection with Guy, but had a renewed joy in helping others find love. However, just when she thought her journey might end without a spark, Charles, a quiet, dependable man who had been patiently by her side, surprised her with a heartfelt confession. Joan, I've seen how much happiness you bring to everyone around you, he said one evening, his eyes warm but I'd love a chance to be the one bringing that happiness to you. It was a moment that felt lifted out of a movie script. Joan realized that her heart wasn't as closed off as she thought, and that Charles had been there, patiently waiting for her to notice him. And this time, the matchmaker found herself matched, her own happy ending on the horizon. Closing the chapter with love and laughter. As the final rose ceremony approached, Joan had a different set of jitters. She had not only found a potential love in Charles, but also established lasting bonds between her friends and the men who had once pursued her. With a glint in her eye, Joan wrapped up the season by orchestrating one last dinner where her friends and their new matches gathered to toast to love, friendship, and unexpected connections. The finale was a celebration of love's unpredictability. 
Joan had broken the mold of the traditional baccalaureate experience, showcasing not only her search for a partner, but also her mission to help others discover meaningful relationships. She and Charles exchanged roses in front of her friends, the cast of new couples, and a cheering crowd of crew members. This time, it wasn't only about Joan finding her match. It was a community of new love, sparked by her unique vision. As she held Charles's hand and looked out over the crowd of smiling faces, Joan knew she had brought her own kind of magic to golden baccalaureate history. Not just one love story, but many. And in her heart, that was worth every rose and every moment she'd spent searching.